And thank you for your kind introduction. <coughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm honored to, be, uh, to have an opportunity to do a presentation here. Today, I'm going to talk about new strategy for bone regeneration uh, using platelet-rich fibrin and osteum implant. One of the latest innovations in oral surgery is the use of platelet concentrates for in vivo tissue engineering application. It was first introduced in 1998 by Dr. Mao's whole PRP. Since then, many platelet concentrates have been introduced and they were used in many clinical situations, especially in oral and maxillofacial facial surgery. A PRF stands for the platelet rich fibrin. It was first developed in France by Dr. Shokun in 2001 and is currently considered as a new generation of platelet concentrate. The PRF protocol is very simple. A blood sample is taken without anticoagulant in 10 ml graph tubes. And they are immediately centrifuged at 400 grams for 10 minutes. A PRF clot is then obtained in the middle of the tube, just between the red corpuscles at the bottom and the acellular plasma at the top. The middle fraction is taken from the tube about just between uh, about two millimeter lower dividing line, which is the PRF. Uh, this is the same examination of PRF. In the first millimeter of yellow clot, or just after the red clot, almost all plate reds and leukocytes were found. The most part of PRF is a yellow clot, which is a dense and a mature fibrin matrix. So we can say that the PRF is strong, dense biomaterial uh, with platelets and leukocytes. A PRF is generally used mixed with other grafting materials. And we can use as a solo grafting material in the form of fibrin clot. Furthermore, we can use as a membrane one of the aims of this presentation is to introduce how to use a PRF in bone regeneration. The other aim of this presentation is to introduce excellent osteum implant system for bone regeneration. First, I'd like to talk about rasket and casket. So my first topic is atrophic maxillary. In such a case, a lateral approach sinus lift should be, should be performed. And the last kit can be used, using, uh, making lateral window. We can easily and safely approach the membrane using last kit. However, we have to pay attention not to damage, not to, not to damage sinus membrane, when separating the membrane from bone wall. And considering the bone regeneration, this part of bone is very important. And lateral window should be made as high as possible. But the higher the window is made, the more difficult to separate the membrane. But what I am saying is, the last kit has excellent drill to approach the membrane, but don't have specialized kit for separating or elevating the membrane. So we have to separate and elevate the membrane in conventional manner. Uh, to overcome this problem, I use the casket prior to use the rasket. The casket consists of castle, a stopper, and hydraulic lifter. A casket is really excellent kit, not only for approaching the membrane, 
but also separating or elevating the membrane. In this case, the residual bone height is no more than 2 mm. A custard can be used to approach the membrane. Reach the membranes successfully. After that, separate and elevate the membrane using hydraulic lift. To separate the membrane widely, uh, inject saline different direction by inflating hydraulic lift. Like this. You can see the membrane was widely separated. This. If you need to elevate the membrane more widely, use the casket in plural side. On the side, use cast drill and hydraulic lifter. On the second side, use cast drill and hydraulic lift. Of course, injected water will escape from past hole. Here. But that assures the membrane was separated successfully. After the membrane was separated, next step is packing grafting material. We can pack the material by a prepared course, but it's pretty time consuming because the holes are too small. And it's difficult to pack the grafting material at this site. So I recommend to make lateral window using gasket. I always use casket prior to use gasket so the membrane have separated already. Using glass kit, after using casket, so the membrane have separated already. So we can easily elevate the membrane. And by lateral window, we can easily pack the graphene material. Before packing grafting materials, I use PRF to cover the membrane, just in case of unconscious perforation of the membrane. And then pack the materials from lateral window. This is my strategy for, for regeneration in atopic machine. Summing up my first topic, the casket is really excellent kit for approaching and elevating the membrane. But the hole is too small to pack the grafting material while a lateral window is needed. Rust kit is also an excellent kit for making lateral window. And using both casket and glass kit, uh, we can easily separate and elevate the membrane and easily pack the graphic materials via lateral wind. And PRF is useful to cover the membrane just in case of unconscious perforation. Our next topic is the toothless damage of the region. It is still challenging for us to regenerate bone in such a case. A number of different techniques have been developed including only bone graft, uh, destruction of the genesis, and guided bone regeneration, GBR. A GBR is one of the most popular and well-documented techniques for bone regeneration. I'd like to show you the conventional GBR technique with this case. Alveolar ridge was absorbed vertically and horizontal. 
uh, three implants were placed in adequate positions. Uh, however, the upper part of implant was out of bone, so bone grafting was needed. In the GBS technique, perforating cortical bone is very important uh, to have local blood supply. After that, in this case, I used beta tissue deposit. And the GBR membrane was placed to protect the particles and suture. Six months after surgery, alveolar ridge was augmented by the retinal horizontal. However, the gingival tissue above the membrane appears to be thin and weak, probably due to poor blood supply to the uh, gingival tissue. A reopening, the membrane was carefully removed. All three implants were covered by bone like tissue. Aesthetic and final, uh, functional final restoration. Uh, this is a conventional GBR technique. In the GBR technique, a very important point is to have a local blood supply by cortical perforation. However, the GBL membrane is a kind of barrier, so the blood can't reach to the gingival tissue above the membrane. The problem, problem of GBL technique is the GBL membrane has negative effect for gingival tissue above the membrane. To overcome this problem, recently, a new concept was introduced called Natural Bone Regeneration, NBR. In this method, a PRF is cut in small pieces and mixed with other grafting materials. And this mixture maintains the space for bone regeneration. A PRF is also used as a membrane and placed above the mixture. The PR membrane enhances the gingival tissue, which is the difference to the GBR technique. This is a case report by Dr. Del Corso, who first introduced this technique. In the original NPR, only the mixture of PRF and graphic materials are used for space making. However, as to the space making, Using titanium mesh is effective, which never interferes with blood supply to the digital tissue. Furthermore, using titanium mesh, the NBR can be done with only PRF, because titanium mesh ensures the space for bone regeneration. Avoiding other graphic materials are beneficial because we can apply this technique to the patient who refuse using allograft, or xenograft, or alloplastic materials. The most important, most important point with this technique is basic fixation of titanium mesh. Ostium smart builder is suitable for this technique. I show you a clinical case. In this case. Three implants were installed and bone grafting was needed. After making transcortical threading, PRF was used as a solo grafting material and covered by titanium mesh or stem smart bead. A several PRF membrane was placed above the, me above the mesh to stimulate soft dish hair and suture. Before and four months after the surgery, titanium mesh ensured space for bone regeneration. At the GBR and NBR, both procedures achieved alveolar ridge augmentation. However, gingival tissue above the GBR membrane appears to be thin and weak. In contrast, in NBR method, the gingival tissue was thick and healthy. 
a four months after the surgery, reopening and remove the mesh. A strong, more like tissue around the implant. Uh, this is a new tissue by only PRA and blood clot. Oh, five months after the surgery, the regenerated alveolar ridge was quite broad and keratinized thick gingival tissue around the implant. This is the modified animal technique using only PRF and titanium mesh. Another case. In this case, I used DFDBA particle in right side and only PRF in left side. Then smart build about press case. So right side is DFDBA and smart build. Left side is PRF and smart build. Does the difference in grafting materials affect the result? Four months after surgery. Remove the smart build. Both right side and left side. Bone like tissue was regenerated. No difference was found between DFDBA and PRF. Now, expectedly, uh, this side of bone resolved uh, where smart builder wasn't used, suggesting the most important factor for bone regeneration is not grafting material, but the space for bone regeneration. Osteum Smart Builder ensures the space for bone regeneration and using Osteum Smart Builder, bone regeneration can be done without grafting materials. Summing up the second topic, the GBL technique is effective for bone regeneration, however, negative for gingival tissue. The NBL, uh, NBL technique overcomes the problem by using PRF membrane. In original NBR method, bone grafting materials are used for space mating. Using titanium mesh, NBR can be done with only PRS because space for bone regeneration is ensured by titanium mesh. Awesome smart builder is easy to handle and suitable for this technique. In the last of my presentation, I'd like to show you more four cases in these different situations. The first case, a right, right side a lower premolar and molars were missing. A first premolar, a first premolar and second premolar were extracted one month ago. A soft dish has been hit. But the post extraction circuit remains. Actually, large bone defect in first stimulus site. The implant was installed. A part of the implant was out of the bone. A PRF was placed. And Austin Smart Builder. Uh, more PRF. Then suture. A smart builder ensures the space for bone regeneration. A four months after the surgery, a villa ridge was augmented. A reopening and smart builder was removed. An implant was completely covered by new regenerated tissue. A final resolution. Alveolar ridge was augmented and gingival tissue around implant is good condition. A second case. A horizontally resolved alveolar ridge. A with deficient alveolar core. So, uh, three implants was, were installed and the upper part of the implant was out of the bone. 
The first case, uh, the implant was placed in extraction circuit, so it was rel relatively easy to have blood supply. The second case, implant was installed already healed alveolar ridge. It was more difficult to have local blood supply. So, for example, perforation is needed at PRF, then smart filter. More PRF, more PRF. Next picture. Five months after surgery, alveolar ridge was augmented horizontally and gingival tissue around the implant is good condition. A already healed alveolar ridge was augmented horizontally by only PRF. The third case. This technique can be applied to aesthetic term. CT examination, alveolar bone was resolved horizontally and implant was installed. The PRF and smart builder. A smart builder ensures a space for bone regeneration. Four months after surgery, the opening and remove the mesh. <coughs> a new regenerated tissue by only PRF and smart uh, Horizontally augmented alveolar bridge. A soft tissue around the implant is good condition. Uh, this is a last case. Vertically, vertically absorbed alveolar bridge. A two implant placement and three unit fixed bridge were was trapped. And second femoral site, extra, extraction circuit was remained. And second molar site, an inferior alveolar nerve was relatively high position. So bad carbon augmentation is needed. Implant placement in adequate positions. Bone augmentation at the post extraction circuit is relatively easy, but vertical bone augmentation above already healed alveolar bone is difficult because of difficulty of having blood supply and difficulty of keeping space for bone regeneration. Cortical vibrations. Uh, these are not grafting materials, but bone tips generated by making cortical perforation. The PRF, and then use titanium mesh for keeping space for bone regeneration. The Ostem Smart Builder has various types for various bone defects, one wall, a two wall, and three wall defect. Recently, a larger Smart Builder Name Joe Builder has come out for vertical bone augmentation. Now I can use Joe Builder for vertical bone augmentation. It's really easy to handle. But at that time, Joe Builder hasn't come out yet. So I used this type of titanium mesh. And uh, fix the mesh by tie over string more PRF, and the titanium mesh ensures a space for bone regeneration. Four months after surgery, I removed the mesh. The implant was completely covered by new tissue. One month after the second surgery, Alveolar ridge was augmented vertically and horizontally. The final restoration. I have presented four cases of modified NVR technique using PRF and smart filter. This technique is simple, inexpensive, and completely fits in daily clinical practice. But 
Clinical aspects of this technique require long-term observation and further investigation. As I talk about new strategy for bone regeneration, thank you very much.